Hello and welcome back to another episode of Nick Tiffany's Movie Reviews, coming at you online and in print format at nicktiffany.com, in audio format wherever you get your podcasts, and even in video on YouTube, TikTok, Reels. You can find us pretty much anywhere you get your media. Today we are talking about a film that I've already talked about probably at great length, and if you follow me on social media, you've probably seen me beating the hell out of this drum, but we're talking Godzilla Minus One. Though this time, it's also Minus Color. This Minus Color version is a week-long engagement that Toho kind of initiated here in the States, coming off of Godzilla's first Oscar nomination in 70 years for the visual effects category. This is a great push to get the film out there for more audiences. The film has made well over $50 million here in America, putting it at number three and closing it at number two, As far as foreign releases go, foreign language releases um, in English go, or in America go, uh, which is incredibly impressive. The film continues to grow week by week, finding new audiences. People are realizing that this isn't just a monster movie, which I've been telling them all along. I mean, this is a human story at its core that happens to take place with a Godzilla monster there. Uh, But I was stoked for this black and white edition, partially because they brought back some premium formatting shows for it as well. So I wasn't able to see it in IMAX or Dolby or XD, but I was able to see this minus color in the Cinemark XD format, louder, bigger screen, better projector. I've gone three times now to the black and white in that format. It just gets better every freaking time. And, you know, first and foremost, I think what really stands out about this black and white version to me, this isn't just, you know, we're slapping a filter on it, we're going to convert it in post, turn it black and white. You know, people have kind of showed online what that conversion looks like. The visual effects editors for this film and the animators, like, painstakingly went through each frame, each scene, making sure that as they make this conversion, you still get the brightness of certain shades of colors or clouds. I mean, there's so much definition when it comes to the ripples and the waves of the water. And for me, I think one of the biggest helps too, and I saw this in Zack Snyder's Justice League, Mad Max Fury Road, some of these other films that have a black and white version, whether it was shooting on film and that's some of your stock as well. But costumes, colors, and visual effects can sometimes look better in that black and white format. Partially maybe because you can hide some of the brightness or, you know, especially in the case of Justice League or superhero movies, some characters have costumes that are so bright and colorful that it almost just looks cheesier. It looks rubbery. I mean, I think of The Flash that came out last year and there's so many moments where everything just looked too glossy or too fake. Pop that in black and white. All right, you know what? It doesn't look as silly. And I know the flash is red, and even though it doesn't look red there, I know what it should look like. In this movie, I know Godzilla's atomic breath and his spinal dorsal plates all glow blue. In this movie, they just glow brightly, but it works really well. And I just found so many different moments in this movie where I was like, wow, this is insane how crystal clear so much of the smoke, battle damage... Just anything from people's names to just things written down, it just is incredibly impressive. And because it takes place in that World War II time, I think the black and white really does lend itself to the story. You know, kind of an homage as well to the original Gojira and the black and white, obviously, in that movie. It feels a little bit more horror-like in this format. Godzilla was already really terrifying in this movie, So much so because you're also scared for these human characters that we really like. But he's just terrifying. You know, the beginning of the movie, this smaller dinosaur-like beast, frightening, especially in the black and white. I mean, it, it looks horrifying. They do such a great job with the detail, keeping everything in the darkness as it needs to be. But Godzilla the entire time just looks menacing. And he looks maybe a little bit more realistic as some sort of dino creature, especially when you're up close. Some of the colors of his skin you don't have to try to separate or I don't know. Sometimes in the colored version, you could say, hey, yeah, maybe you could tell it looks like a suit or it's a little CGI like whatever. 
I felt like that was hardly the case here at all. Every single time you see this monster, it's incredibly impressive what they're able to do, working around the lack of color, but then also showcasing all these different parts of his body, from the teeth to the plates. I, you know, his glowing eyes at times is horrifying. Uh, so they do a just really, really tremendous job with that. And, you know, to a degree, this review is more or less, you know, I, I think it'll probably be out of this format, unfortunately, by the time you're hearing this. It should hopefully be on digital, and I'm hoping 4K and DVD in the next couple months leading up to the Oscars would be my hope because I'm going to rewatch the crap out of this at home. But I just, you know, I'm, I'm going to turn this just a little bit spoiler now. So if you haven't seen the movie, go listen to my other review or go watch the movie while you can. You probably have a day, but keep an eye out for it. But every freaking time I watch this movie, I am so overwhelmingly impressed by director, writer, and visual effects artist lead Takashi, uh, Takashi Yamazaki. The story he's told, the moments he's crafted in this movie, it's like, to me, this is what movies are all about. There are so many moments in this film that take your breath away, that leave your jaw hanging, that leave a lump in your throat, shivers going up and down your body. I mean, every time I've watched this movie, I'm crying, I'm tearing up. I just, it's impossible not to. The way they present the sorrow, the loss of tens of thousands of lives, the loss of one life, you feel everything. And Shikshima is such a great character on paper and in the film, I, you know, carrying around so much of this grief, trying to find the will to live again. You know, there's so much commentary made about how the Japanese government treated life, suicide and kamikaze pilots, making planes without ejector seats, poor supply chains. You think about everything so many of these soldiers or people have been through just to get through the war, and here they are facing annihilation again. Um, I just, oh God, every time I watch this movie, I am more and more impressed. And I mean, at the top of that list, uh, Rainosuke Kamiki, who plays Shikshima, he, I mean, he's undoubtedly the MVP of the story. When he collapses down to his knees after we really witness Godzilla's atomic breath for the first time, and he sees the devastation all around him, people who were there moments ago, just vanished, obliterated, probably disintegrated, everything around him in smoke, nuclear mushroom cloud, towering higher than Godzilla. And when he sees Godzilla's reaction and he sees everything around him, he lets out this primal scream. And it's not like the primal roar that Godzilla lets out right before, but it is this scream of desperation, of loss, of confusion, despair, when all of the, ah, it's not acid rain, forget what the term was again though, but when all the rain starts coming down from the mushroom cloud after, and especially in this black and white version that you see his face just getting covered with it as he's screaming in agony and crying, Godzilla's marching off, it's just freaking, ah, oh, it is so moving. That like, I mean, that scene gives me chills. He gives me chills so many times in this movie with the emotion that he's able to bring to the role. Just like at the very end, I know some people are not fond of the fact that uh, Noriko survives, and I get it. She got blasted to all hell and back after that nuke went off with the atomic breath. You know, that last little bit of film that they show you, clearly there's something alive in her body this dark DNA kind of flowing around. Clearly there's some Godzilla radiation in her. So we're going to go benefit of the doubt. Like Godzilla probably is regenerating slowly. Who knows what it means, but man, when he gets the note that she's alive and he comes into her hospital room and sees her and just like slowly drops to his knees and can't like, he's like, <laughs> you know, he can't even surmise where he can't, speak he's like me right now he can't speak and it just i mean there's so many of these moments that my heart's just like oh my god he does such a great job 
communicating this entire journey he's gone on through the film and carries it with him into that final frame when she asks him, you know, is your war finally over? You know, and he can't even say like, yes, he just immediately goes into her arms, nodding, sobbing. I just am so impressed by this movie on so many levels. I'm on TikTok every day, rewatching clips of when Godzilla shows up. Um, first time kind of behind them in the boat after they finally anger him, blow up part of his mouth and he gets up towering over this boat. And you're like, Oh, these guys are screwed. I'm like, Oh, it's too early for this man. Like this is bad. Let's his roar out. And as he's roaring, gets battered with cannon fire from the Takao warship. I mean, the music change in that scene specifically with this giant bells ring as the camera quickly pans over You've got this big-ass warship firing shot after shot. Godzilla's just taking fire all over. You're like, he's just taking six shots, falls into the water. You know, the guys on the boat are screaming. You're They're like, Takao! They're like, yes, yes, we're saved. Godzilla's going down. Until Godzilla pops down into the water. And that shot of him swimming around down below, money. It looks so good. And then they're like, oh, no, no. Oh, crap. These guys are screwed. He pops up onto that ship and just starts laying waste to everybody and everything, knocking the control towers down. And it's so cool because as this thing's tipping and moving, you've got the guys on the ship as they're like in Titanic, falling down, trying to hold on and not slide. And there's this great bit where as Godzilla's about to make another swing, two of the cannons get off another shot before he might destroy him. And that's enough to kind of pop him off over the edge. And again, there's another moment where I'm like, damn, they might have, okay, they might have bought themselves some time. This is great. But then the music shifts again. And you've got almost this angelic choir going. And before you know it, all that water is starting to light up beneath them. And they're like, what's going on? What is this? And immediately from underwater, just freaking disintegrated. Atomic breath. You don't see Godzilla, but you see that atomic breath first. I remember the first time I saw that, I was just like, oh my God, I I was stunned. It was crazy. Um, and then all the way at the very end of the movie, just to, I know I'm geeking out over here, just to wrap it up. I love, love, love how they handle the entire uh, Freon gas bit, moving the two ships around each other bracing for action, rubbing some paint as they try to circle Godzilla. The music in this film is freaking top-notch. Such a great homage to the original Godzilla, but updated for a more modern time. These powerful musical moments that just propel the film forward. But the freaking scene that I keep coming back to, day after day, think about it all the time, is just after they bring Godzilla up, they've sent him down, 1500 meters below the surface brought him back up almost just as quickly, you know, with this idea that, okay, you know, maybe he's got the bends. Maybe he is all out of shape. We can freeze him partially as we bring him back up quickly from taking him at that depth. And when they pull him back out after getting the, you know, I call it the Dunkirk moment when all the tugboats show up to help bring him up and the kid comes back, even after the Navy vets told him to stay, obviously they're stoked to see him so many great character moments like that though and they bring godzilla back up they're like shit he's not quite weakened enough and he starts charging up again and this shot pans as he lifts his head up he's got his hands kind of right next to him and his eyes are just glowing as the mouth starting to glow again he looks terrifying i don't think there's ever been a more terrifying shot of godzilla and i'll try to post it somehow along with this because i I mean, I pause on that clip when I'm on my phone because I'm like, this is genuinely terrifying stuff. And the music cuts out right as he's about to let that beam go. You got the shot of the captain and Doc, hair flowing, staring death down in the face. All these young guys on the cruise starting to take their hats off, feeling like this is the moment. Other ship captains screaming, telling everybody to get down. Uh, Mizushima's just there. I'm like, everybody is just breathing their last breath. And then they cut to that little glint in the sky. And Shikshima comes in. The angels start roaring again for the soundtrack. I remember watching it for the first time 
when Tachibana tells him, you know, something to remember, right before you fly into, right before you fly into the mouth, pull this lever here. That's the safety for the bombs. I was thinking he's trying to trick Shikshima, not telling him that there's an ejector. And when he pulls that, he's going to get ejected. So first time watching this, I'm like, okay, he's getting close to the mouth, pulls the red deal, doesn't eject. I was like, no, man, he's going to die. He's going to die. And, you know, Doc and Captain are yelling, you know, Shikshima, no, please. I didn't catch it the first time, right as he flies in, that he pulled the ejection. So when they're fine, you know, Tachibana's waiting at the radio with his headphones on. It's like, do we have deployment? Did he make it? That shot, when Doc's like, you know, there he is. It's like, I see him. I see him. And he's almost crying. Tachibana's over there. And they tell him, you know, pilot deployed. Everything worked. He takes the headphones off so slowly. And his breath is just this like, <gasps> hands shaking. Save this man's life. The journey that they've been on. I'm getting emotional talking about it right now. But man, I just. There are so many perfect moments in this movie. From story to characters to writing to direction to soundtrack. I just freaking love this movie. And I will never stop beating its drum. So when this comes out on digital, you know I'm going to be obnoxious about it. If you've seen this movie, this is a safe place to talk about it. We can spoil talk. I want to know what people are thinking because I know I'm not alone thinking this is like one of the greatest movies. That was definitely the best movie of last year for me. Definitely the best Godzilla movie. But thank you for indulging me and listening to me ramble about this. As always, stay tuned to NT Movie Reviews on all social media networks, podcast platforms, and on YouTube. We're going to have plenty more coming out. Argyle's going to be out soon enough, so that's what we're talking next. So stay tuned. Thanks for listening.